This video is a brief introduction to server pools and an overview of the Create Server Pools Wizard in Oracle Enterprise Manager Ops Center. A server pool is a group of one or more virtualization hosts of the same kind. One or more guests reside on each virtualization host. These virtualization hosts share the storage and network resources allocated to the server pool. In a server pool, you can move guests among virtualization hosts. You can use this feature for load balancing and server maintenance without disrupting the service. All server pools require a network domain, a storage library, and at least one virtualization host. There are extra prerequisites depending on the virtualization technology. Let's quickly review some information about the three common requirements for server pools and Ops Center. Virtualization hosts of a server pool must use the same virtualization technology in the same architecture. Ops Center supports Oracle Solaris zones for Spark or x86, an Oracle VM server for Spark or x86 as their virtualization technology. A network domain can be defined as a network container and it must have at least one network. A server pool is associated with a network domain and all virtualization hosts in the server pool are associated with the same set of networks. Storage libraries store the metadata of the virtualization hosts and guests and also provide a storage for virtual disks. Let's continue with an overview of the Create Server Pools wizard. In Ops Center, you can create and configure a new server pool to manage your virtualization hosts and guests. We will review how to create a server pool using Oracle Solaris zones. The steps in the wizard change based on the virtualization technology that you choose. So let's get started. The first step of the wizard requires us to provide a name and define the virtualization technology for the server pool. We can select among Oracle Solaris zones for Spark or x86, an Oracle VM server for Spark or x86 for the virtualization technology. Click Next to continue. Now we need to select the virtualization host members of the server pool, which in this example are global zones. The wizard lists the eligible members for the type of server pool we are creating. You must select at least one virtualization host but to take full advantage of load balancing and high availability, select at least two virtualization hosts. Click Next. Now we select the network domain to associate with the server pool. I'm selecting the default network domain for this example. Click Next. Click the Add Network button above the Associate Networks table to attach a network to all the global zones of the server pool. Click Next. The selected network is not connected to the virtualization hosts. To configure the connection, choose the network interface, the connection mode, the IP address allocation method, and eventually the IP address. Starting with version 12.2.2 of Fob Center, if a selected network is connected, the connection settings appear as read only. On earlier versions, a connected network is not displayed and it stays as configured. Click Next. Now. We select the storage libraries that we want to associate with the server pool. The available storage types change according to the virtualization technology. App Center provides two main types of storage. File system storage, such as NAS libraries and Oracle VM storage repository, and block storage that supports SAM protocols like Fiber Channel and iSCSI. Click Next. On the last screen, we can configure the placement and auto-balancing policies. The wizard requests us to specify policies for the server pool. The placement policy assigns a virtualization host in the pool as a preferred destination for new guests based on load, allocated CPU and memory, or power consumption criteria. The auto-balancing policy schedules when and how often the load is balanced in the server pool in the approval criteria. Additionally, you can enable automatic recovery of zones, logical domains and guests. This feature provides the option to recover the guests that are attached to a failed server. The recovered guests are restarted on other servers and the server pool. Click Next. We now review the information and click Finish to generate the job that creates the server pool. When the job's completed, we see the new server pool and its members in the server pools list. We can modify the server pool to add or change network and storage resources and members as needed. This concludes this overview. For more information, consult the Ops Center's library. Go to docs.oracle.com Look for Enterprise Management and select the Enterprise Manager Ops Center version you need.